Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alex Chen, and the provost of the CTU. So uh, uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to uh, welcome our distinguished uh, lecture series speaker, uh, Professor Nam Kyu Park uh, from uh, uh, Song Zheng Guan University. Uh, Professor Park uh, got his uh, uh, started from the re recite whatever I know about you, right? Okay, so uh, starting from uh, uh, your PhD in 1995 from uh, Seoul National U University. Then uh, after uh, his PhD, he went to France and also to NREL. Okay, uh, NREL is uh, one of the most famous place for renewable energy research okay, in Colorado. So uh, he went to both uh, France and also uh, uh, NREL uh, to do postdoc there. And uh, afterward, uh, he came back to uh, Korea and uh, started his uh, uh, industrial research job in KIST, and eventually also in ITRI, right? Okay, so those are the uh, uh, two uh, very famous uh, uh, research uh, institute uh, in Korea. So uh, uh, because of his uh, excellent uh, uh, research performance, and then eventually he got uh, hired to Song Zheng Guan University in 2009 and uh, to become a full professor, okay, uh, uh, Song Zheng Guan University. So, uh, uh, Professor Park is uh, uh, one of the pioneers in uh, uh, inventing uh, ProSky uh, solar cell research. In there. So uh, uh, I don't have to really elaborate. You will see uh, whatever uh, the contents from his, uh, his talk. But then I would like to just uh, uh, name a few of the, his uh, uh, recognition, right? Okay, and uh, uh, he was uh, uh, selected as a new class of Nobel Prize worthy scientist in September uh, 2017, and uh, uh, also uh, as a one of the highly cited researchers okay, by uh, uh, Carivet uh, Analytics. And uh, uh, in uh, <coughs> many of his award he received, right? He uh, uh, recently received the uh, uh, Hoan Prize. I think the, that's a one of the uh, very distinguished uh, prize, okay, in uh, in the whole Korea, okay, very distinguished, and uh, he's a fellow of the uh, Korean Academy of Science, and uh, starting from the uh, uh, 2017, right, okay, uh, as a acad academy members, right. So, uh, uh, you know, in short, he's a world class and a very reputable scientist, and uh, you will listen to his talk, okay. Thank you very much. Let's join the. Uh, I'd like to uh, give a talk about uh, lead halide perovskite, uh, not only photovoltaics, but also the, uh, some uh, the, uh, beyond the photovoltaics, uh, such as X-ray imaging system. Uh, well, uh, the, I'd like to uh, compare the conventional oxide perovskite and also the uh, organic inorganic halide perovskite. For instance, perovskite uh, uh, has the crystal structure uh, with the chemical formula of the uh, ABX3. Uh, the, uh, this is an uh, uh, example of the uh, cubic structure uh, perovskite material. And then if you calculate uh, the uh, radius with the radius uh, ABX, uh, then uh, you have this kind of the relationship, uh, for instance, this one. And uh, cubic uh, structure, the tolerance factor uh, uh, becomes 1. But uh, if you have the uh, tolerance factor in between 0 0.8 uh, and 1, then uh, you expect the form ability of the uh, perovskite structure. But uh, if you take a look at some of uh, the uh, close packing model, uh, which is actually uh, assumed to be uh, the all the uh, sphere element is the same element, then uh, the perovskite looks like the cubic cross packing structure, meaning that A uh, B, C sequence, A, B, C sequence. If you, have, if you take the one uh, layer, such as B layer, then you look, uh, the, uh, which is, looks like this one, and then uh, the green color is uh, A side cation, and purple color is the uh, X anion. So uh, green color is surrounded by uh, hexagonally with this uh, uh, iodide anion. So 75% of the iodide and 25% of the a side cation is the same plane. It's sitting on the same plane. And uh, if you uh, have uh, some missing of such an uh, element, such as the iodide or cation, then uh, you have the great defect. But uh, 
Anyway, uh, this structure, uh, uh, for instance, the uh, conventional semiconductor, uh, we can expect electrical conductivity increases with the temperature because of the, uh, the, uh, the increase of population of excitation uh, by thermal energy. But for the case of metal, the electrical conductivity decreases with the temperature because uh, the electron will be scattered by the phonon vibration at high temperature. So uh, for instance, uh, the, uh, the MAPBI3, uh, this data uh, is actually taken from this, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, journal uh, paper, and then uh, the electrical conductivity decreases with the temperature. So the question is, the, uh, then the MAPBI3, methyl ammonium lead iodide, is metallic, uh, but uh, metal, uh, the MAPBI3 is not metallic, it's uh, uh, insulated to a semiconductor. So why? Uh, then it the, uh, looks like the uh, behavior of the electrical conductivity with temperature looks like the metallic uh, behavior, uh, which is probably the, uh, the uh, molecular vibration of the uh, acide cation, even at the room temperature, can initiate or the accelerate or the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the phonon vibration. So probably electric electron will be scattered by this uh, the phonon vibration. And also, the, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, band gap energy, uh, which can be also uh, the, uh, estimated uh, in terms of temperature the, uh, by seeing the, uh, the, the, the exciton uh, binding energy. And uh, usually, uh, semiconductor band gap energy uh, decreases with the temperature. But the uh, MAPBI3, uh, uh, the band gap energy increases with the temperature, So which is contrary to the conventional semiconductor. So we have to define this uh, material uh, so newly. It's not uh, by uh, conventional semiconductor. And also, if you uh, strain the, uh, some uh, perovskite solar cell, then uh, the uh, external quantum efficiency increases, okay? meaning that uh, you have the more photocurrent density. Uh, the other way around, for instance, if you uh, the, uh, the stretchy, out the uh, perovskite solar cell, then the photocurrent density decreases. So, uh, which cannot be explained exactly uh, by using the conventional uh, semiconductor <laughs> physics. So, uh, anyway, uh, so this material is very uh, pretty much interesting uh, in terms of the physical property, optoelectronic property. Let me uh, introduce uh, briefly the history of the uh, perovskite solar cell. Actually, uh, the, my background uh, is. Uh, uh, for in terms of solar cell uh, work, I uh, started solar cell work since 1997 uh, at the uh, National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Uh, at that time, uh, my supervisor was uh, Dr. Arthur Frank. Now uh, he retired, actually. And then uh, uh, I uh, worked with the uh, worked on the uh, dye sensitized solar cell. And at that time, uh, the uh, the I got uh, efficiency about 9.2 percent. Uh, 1998. Uh, which is second world best efficiency, the Michael Grachel, uh, the actually achieved uh, the 10 percent efficiency. But the problem uh, you see here, the uh, dye sensitized solar cell is always the uh, efficiency saturated for long time, uh, so over 20 years. Uh, the the efficiency maximum efficiency was about 12 percent. So people so working on the dye sensitized solar cell would like to search some uh, new Material because this is uh, due to the uh, low absorption coefficient of the uh, ruthenium-based uh, uh, the sensitizer. So people would like to find out the new sensitizer. And then uh, the uh, at that time uh, some uh, transient state is uh, uh, in uh, dye sensor solar cell is to seeking is to seek the uh, the uh, quantum dot because quantum dot. Uh, has the uh, higher absorption coefficient than the organic sensitize. So uh, also I uh, engaged in, uh, I was involved in uh, quantum dust sensitized solar cell. At that time uh, we developed uh, the uh, lead sulfide uh, doped with mercury and then we achieved uh, uh, almost uh, 30 uh, milliamps per square centimeter which is uh, about, uh, which was about 6% uh, efficiency. So uh, pretty much high efficiency. Uh, in, in terms of quantum dust sensitized solar cell. But you know, uh, the always the uh, very low open circuit voltage uh, uh, is uh, suffering from low open circuit voltage, 
uh, from this quantum dot uh, because of high surface area, high surface state. So uh, the uh, people would like to find uh, the uh, better uh, sensitized in uh, dye sensitized solar cell to improve further efficiency. So uh, the, uh, while searching the, this kind of the quantum dot material, uh, the, I was invited to the uh, summer conference that is called Nano Euro 2007, organized by Dysol. And I gave a talk about the uh, R&D activities in uh, 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 about the uh, dye sensor solar cell. And then uh, the, uh, the, uh, when I take a look at uh, the program, the, uh, the title uh, was not given, uh, just the new DS solutions. And then the Tom Yasaka, uh, the actually was invited and then he gave a talk about perovskite sensitized solar cell. And then at that time, the efficiency was about the 2%. So the efficiency at that time was uh, about 11% uh, from the N719 uh, organic sensitized. But the 2% is uh, pretty much uh, low efficiency, even uh, lower than the quantum dot uh, the uh, solar cell. So people so, uh, did not pay attention to uh, uh, this uh, his work. But I was uh, pretty much motivated because my background in uh, MS uh, and the PhD work uh, was based on the uh, perovskite oxide. So uh, I know the, uh, it's a little bit about the perovskite uh, structure and property. And for instance, uh, uh, my, uh, the, uh, during my MS thesis, I studied uh, the double perovskite structure, the calcium or the barium uh, cerium tantal oxide uh, material. In this case, uh, the cerium and tantal uh, may have the uh, 4 plus, 4 plus, or 3 plus, 5 plus. And then depending on oxidation state, uh, we have different uh, the, uh, the chemistry, D1 chemistry, F1 chemistry, so which uh, can affect the uh, magnetic property of this material. So pretty much uh, interesting, but I was not uh, actually interested at that time because uh, I, 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 like to, uh, uh, I would like to work on the uh, superconducting material. So uh, PhD, uh, uh, the course, I studied uh, layered superconducting uh, the uh, perovskite materials. So I actually developed at that time uh, the, uh, the, uh, the bismuth 2 to 1 to compound, uh, lay the structure, and uh, some uh, the, uh, the, uh, the mercury halide uh, compound is intercalated into the uh, interlayer of this uh, superconducting material to understand the superconductivity. Anyway, based upon uh, that kind of background, I was uh, pretty much interested in uh, the uh, Tam Yasaka's uh, talk. So uh, after coming back from the, uh, the conference, conference is very important, I think. You have to uh, take part in a conference, and then you can have the, uh, uh, by chance, uh, very, uh, very important something uh, you can have the, uh, uh, from the conference. And uh, I have the, uh, the postdoc, uh, she, uh, the Dr. Song Nim Jang, and I asked her to uh, the, uh, the, uh, work on the uh, perovskite uh, sensitized solar cell. And then uh, she actually uh, prepared uh, the uh, methyl ammonium lead bromide and also uh, uh, the methyl ammonium lead iodide in powder form. And then uh, she uh, actually deposited this uh, the powder uh, the, uh, make, by making the, some uh, coating solution. And then uh, she deposited uh, the uh, bromide and iodide perovskite on the plain uh, the glass substrate. And then uh, she dropped the uh, electrolyte because we used at that time uh, liquid electrolyte containing uh, lithium iodide or the, and uh, the iodine. And then uh, the, she found that uh, this perovskite is immediately uh, disappeared, dissolved. And also the bromide case is uh, some exchange of the uh, anion. So uh, she uh, uh, recommended, she recommended me this material uh, seems to be garbage uh, because it's uh, easily, uh, quickly uh, dissolved out. Uh, so it's not useful for the dye sensitized solar cell. And then she wrapped, she left uh, the, uh, the, uh, to uh, National Renewable Energy Laboratory to do uh, some another uh, postdoc work. And then uh, the, uh, while uh, we are uh, the, uh, some forgetting something about the perovskite, uh, uh, solar cell, uh, Tamiya Saka eventually uh, published uh, slightly increased with a slightly increased efficiency about 3.8 percent using uh, iodide uh, perovskite uh, in the JEX communication. So uh, this uh, uh, the IPC spectrum is the same, 
as the uh, 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 the what uh, he talked about in uh, 2007 uh, conference, and then uh, this is very important. You see, the uh, the methyl ammonium lead iodide IPC, the maximum IPC is about uh, less than uh, 50 percent. Okay, very low efficiency, and then but the shape of the uh, the IPC is uh, pretty much uh, excellent because uh, the uh, they can uh, convert photon to electron. Uh, in entire wavelength region. So uh, if you uh, improve the uh, further, for instance, uh, the up to the 80% uh, or the 90%, uh, then you can have the very uh, pretty much high uh, the performance. So uh, we actually, uh, we uh, uh, resume this, uh, uh, the perovskite solar cell. And then uh, Tom Yasaka uh, actually uh, the proposed that the 10 uh, weight percent of the coating solution but uh, we uh, cannot, we could not obtain the reproducibility by using uh, the, uh, his recipe. So uh, eventually we uh, developed some uh, the uh, high concentration. Uh, this 48 percent is almost a super saturation uh, condition, uh, which is about uh, 1.2 mole. And now uh, we use the 1.2 mole or 1.3 mole uh, as the uh, coating solution concentration. And then uh, we can uh, have, uh, we could have a uh, reproducibly uh, perovskite phase. And then uh, we increase the efficiency 6.5% uh, uh, so with uh, much lower uh, the titanium oxide film thickness. And that uh, this work actually we uh, submitted uh, the uh, first nature and the science and uh, rejected. Uh, the edit uh, uh, told me that uh, this work uh, seems to be interesting, but uh, it's not uh, the uh, new uh, result, just a slightly improved result uh, of uh, Tam Miyasaka's work. So actually, Tam Miyasaka uh, also uh, the submitted the first uh, submitted uh, his work to Nature or Science and rejected actually because of very low efficiency. Anyway, uh, so uh, uh, I uh, submitted uh, my work uh, on uh, published in uh, nanoscale. Uh, this work actually uh, spent uh, more than one year, and then uh, the uh, eventually uh, this uh, published uh, this work in uh, 2011 uh, uh, by Chung Hyuk Im. And now he is working as postdoc with uh, Professor Michael Gratcher. The high concentration. Why high co high concentration is important uh, in a coating solution? Because uh, you have to think about uh, the uh, there are so many ions in a coating solution. So ion ion interaction, ion solvent interaction, uh, they will compete each other. Then uh, if you uh, increase the ion solvent interaction, you may not have the uh, uh, the uh, perovskite phase. So. Uh, the increasing uh, concentration uh, will increase the ion-ion uh, interaction. Uh, the, then uh, uh, you can uh, eliminate the ion solvent uh, interaction. But uh, as I mentioned that uh, this material uh, is uh, still uh, is, uh, is, uh, uh, is unstable in the presence of uh, liquid electrolyte. So I like to uh, change this uh, liquid electrolyte uh, with the sol uh, solid whole conducting material. First, uh, we tried uh, PCRHD, which is uh, well known for the organic photovoltaics. Uh, but uh, we could not get the high efficiency uh, because of polymer nature. So uh, we switched uh, to uh, the molecular structure, uh, molecular whole transporting material, which is also well known. The sp spiral compound is well known material, uh, this one. And then uh, the uh, we, but uh, the first trial, uh, from the first trial, we cannot get the high efficiency. It's around the 6%. Even uh, increasing the uh, film thickness from 1.2 to 1.8 micromet, we could not uh, uh, the improve the efficiency. So the, uh, the Hison Kim uh, now also, uh, uh, she got a PhD degree and then working as postdoc with uh, uh, the Anderson Hagefeld in APFL, Switzerland. And uh, she immediately uh, recognized that uh, our perovskite has a uh, high absorption coefficient, uh, 10 times uh, higher than the conventional uh, N7 and 19 dye. So based upon this uh, relationship, uh, inverse uh, proportional uh, between the absorption coefficient and the film thickness. So she, uh, uh, instead of increasing the film thickness, she uh, would like to decrease the film thickness from two micro to one micro. And then uh, she slightly, uh, she found that the a slight increase of the efficiency from 5.6% to 7.3% uh, uh, 
uh, because of the uh, higher increased open circuit voltage and, and fill factor without sacrificing uh, the photocurrent density. So uh, the, uh, her expectation uh, was right. And then uh, she further decreased uh, up to 0 0.6 micromet. And then uh, without uh, the losing uh, photocurrent density, uh, because of the increased uh, open circuit voltage and fill factor, uh, she, can get, uh, she could get uh, uh, about uh, the 10% efficiency. So and then uh, uh, eventually uh, uh, the 9.7% uh, efficiency with 500 hour uh, long-term stability uh, <laughs> without encapsulation. So uh, we achieved this result and then uh, published uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the scientific reports uh, uh, in uh, uh, 2012, 2012. Actually, because I had some uh, bad experience from uh, the editor comments from Nature and Science, uh, because uh, at that time also uh, the editor uh, mentioned that uh, your result seems to be uh, interesting, but there is no uh, science. So I, I was afraid uh, uh, this work uh, probably, I intended to submit this work to the uh, Nature of Science, but uh, because of a uh, lack of the science, so I asked Michael Gratzel uh, to get uh, some uh, scientific uh, some, uh, uh, the insight. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I sent my uh, student, I sent uh, his and Kim, uh, 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 to uh, Professor Michael Gratchel to measure femtosecond laser dynamics, okay? So because I do not know femtosecond laser dynamics. So uh, we measured the femtosecond laser dynamics and also the impedance spectroscopy uh, to add some uh, science in our work. And then uh, the, uh, eventually uh, we published uh, this work uh, in uh, scientific reports. First, we submitted this work, uh, Nature Communication, uh, because uh, Michael Gratchel recommended uh, we have to hurry up uh, the, uh, uh, we have to submit it uh, the, in, in hurry. And uh, for instance, uh, he mentioned that uh, I, I asked uh, then, uh, so uh, the natural science, no, 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 natural science is, uh, takes a long time. So we have to submit uh, the, our work uh, to nature communication. So, and then uh, we asked uh, editor to, uh, in uh, nature communication, uh, please, uh, the, uh, the process quickly uh, to publish our work. And then uh, the Nature Communication recommended us uh, to transfer uh, from the Nature Communication to scientific reports. <laughs> uh, because uh, Nature Communication, uh, they uh, could not guarantee the, uh, the very quick uh, the, uh, uh, reaction. So scientific reports, you see, uh, they received the July and then uh, uh, 5th and accepted August. Uh, Six. So uh, one month, uh, the almost one month, uh, is uh, very quickly uh, uh, the processed. And now this paper, uh, this work uh, is has been cited uh, more than uh, three thousand, approaching uh, four thousand uh, times. And I investigated that uh, the uh, uh, the publication history uh, of the perovskite solar cell. First, the two thousand nine, uh, Tami Asaka published one paper, and there was no paper in the same year, and in, even in next year. And then uh, we published the second paper in the tw 20, uh, 2011. And then uh, at the same uh, year, uh, we don't have any uh, further uh, publications. This means that uh, the uh, perovskite, uh, the uh, liquid junction type solar cell uh, is very, uh, because of very uh, the, uh, unstable. And then uh, after publication of the uh, solid state, uh, long-term stable uh, solid state perovskite solar cell, uh, the publication increases uh, exponentially in the last year, uh, about uh, 3,000, over 3,000 uh, uh, the uh, publications uh, came out. And also, uh, the as of today, uh, about uh, 1,500 publications already published. And uh, because the uh, perovskite uh, is quite interesting material, uh, not only the photovoltaics, but also the oxide perovskite uh, uh, can uh, show the, some uh, very interesting uh, the physical property, uh, such as the superconductivity, the piezoelectricity, uh, the ferroelectricity, uh, ferromagnetic property, uh, and so on. So uh, the uh, people are interested in uh, oxide perovskite materials, and then the publication increases gradually up to uh, the until uh, 2012, and then after that, uh, uh, the very uh, the uh, the uh, uh, steeply uh, increases. Uh, uh, increased uh, uh, the publication. 
So this is uh, due to the, uh, the uh, perovskite photovoltaics. So perovskite photovoltaics uh, contributed a lot to this uh, the, uh, the publication increase. And uh, also the perovskite solar cells is pretty much cheap uh, technology. And compared to other uh, uh, the solar cell technology, the perovskite is uh, most uh, uh, the, the uh, cheapest uh, the technology uh, by seeing very uh, short uh, energy payback time. Uh, let me move on some uh, the technology issue uh, in uh, perovskite solar cell. So we uh, the perovskite solar cell uh, has been suffering from the hysteresis issue and also stability. So stability and hysteresis, uh, there is a correlation. Uh, so toward the hysteresis free and stable perovskite solar cell, uh, the uh, we have to some uh, uh, the uh, strategy. Uh, for the interfacial engineering or defect engineering. Uh, the first, uh, the hysteresis, uh, for instance, a silicon uh, type solar cell, uh, we don't see any uh, hysteresis. Hysteresis means that uh, some uh, kind of the mismatch between the fold scan uh, IB curve and uh, liver scan IB curve. But uh, the, uh, the methyl ammonium red iodide, uh, we can see a uh, very severe IB hysteresis. The uh, reverse scan and forward scan, uh, you have a big difference uh, in IB curve. So if you take a look at some of uh, the, uh, the voltage uh, step-wise scan, then uh, there is some uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the high rate of the uh, current uh, and then uh, some uh, decrease with the time or the, uh, some uh, the opposite uh, the value, uh, the very low current and then uh, the uh, uh, saturated to uh, with the time. This is uh, actually well known. This profile is well known uh, as the capacitive current. For instance, uh, if you uh, construct this uh, capacitor and then uh, apply the bias, then uh, the uh, you have, uh, for instance, uh, a charging condition. Uh, the uh, the capacitive current uh, is uh, actually uh, decreases with the time. And for the case of discharging uh, curve. And then uh, the uh, just uh, the uh, the shape is the uh, the same, but the 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 the, the polarity is different. This this is because the uh, the capacitive current is uh, uh, depends on uh, change of the voltage with the time. So anyway, this uh, profile this profile looks like the reverse scan, and uh, uh, the uh, discharging of the uh, the profile uh, looks like the forward scan. So the uh, this is due to the uh, the capacitance related, related to capacitance, okay, here the capacitance. Therefore, uh, if you increase the capacitance, then uh, probably you increase the hysteresis. Therefore, you have to control the capacitance of this perovskite solar cell. The where the capacitance uh, the occurs at interface or the bulk of uh, the uh, perovskite. So we have to uh, find out uh, some uh, uh, the uh, the origins. Anyway, for instance, uh, the perovskite solar cell, you can uh, make the uh, normal structure or inverted structure. Normal structure means that uh, uh, the FTO conducting glass uh, with the, the, uh, the electron transporting layer, such as titanium oxide, and then the uh, top layer is a spiral, uh, the HTL, hole transporting layer. The inverted structure is the uh, different configuration. The uh, hole transporting material is deposited on FTO conducting glass. And then the top, uh, the electrode is uh, ETL layer. But uh, even uh, the using the same uh, methyl ammonium lead iodide uh, perovskite material, the uh, normal structure shows a severe IV hysteresis. But uh, inverted structure, uh, you cannot see any IV hysteresis. The question is uh, uh, probably the interface, selective contact material or the uh, interface, uh, the perovskite near interface may affect the IV hysteresis or may affect the, uh, the, uh, the uh, capacitance here. So uh, the, uh, the question is uh, uh, then uh, how to eliminate, reduce or eliminate IV hysteresis in the normal, the, the structure containing a titanium oxide. Because normal, uh, so far the, uh, the highest efficiency was reported based on the normal visoscopic structure containing titanium oxide. Uh, which was about 22.7% efficiency. So uh, I'd like to uh, 
introduce some uh, interfacial engineering and also bulk defect engineer engineering to remove the or reduce the uh, IB hysteresis. <coughs> First, uh, we introduced the uh, two-dimensional uh, the perovskite in between a three-dimensional perovskite. Uh, and then we used uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the phenyl ethyl, the ammonium, the phenyl ethyl, phenyl ethyl, the ammonium, the cation. And then uh, the, uh, the uh, after introduction of two-dimensional perovskite in between three-dimensional perovskite, uh, we found that a great reduction of the IV hysteresis here. And then uh, probably uh, the, uh, one of the reasons for uh, hysteresis uh, uh, is related to the ion migration uh, due to defect of the, uh, the iodide. So ion migration uh, uh, can accumulate charges at the interface. So uh, for instance, uh, then uh, the why the uh, two-dimensional insertion of two-dimensional reduced the IV hysteresis, probably the, uh, uh, the ion migration will be suppressed by this two-dimensional structure. So the, uh, the calculation results show that uh, the barrier energy for uh, the energy for uh, the, uh, the iodide migration is, uh, is higher for two-dimensional structure than three-dimensional structure. So probably uh, uh, this uh, suppress IV hysteresis. And also, we tested the humidity, uh, the stability, and then the two-dimensional structure uh, actually is uh, much better in terms of the moisture stability compared to without the two-dimensional structure. So even, for instance, a uh, silver electrode here, we can get uh, the 35 days uh, uh, stable uh, perovskite solar cell by insert inserting a two-dimensional uh, uh, perovskite uh, in uh, the MAPBI3. This may be uh, due to the uh, suppression of iodide migration, and then uh, we uh, this, uh, the, uh, some, uh, inhibit uh, the, uh, some oxidation of AG electrode uh, 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 in order not to form the, uh, the AGI. And uh, the, uh, besides the, uh, the organic hole transporting material, inorganic uh, HTM was also the uh, proposed uh, to improve the stability so uh, there are so many uh, candidates here. Among them, the copper salicylate uh, was uh, proposed uh, uh, in terms of the high efficiency also. Recently, uh, the Professor Michael Gracel reported uh, about 20% efficiency using the copper salicylate and then uh, some uh, interfacial engineering uh, improved the uh, stability. So we also, uh, we, we use the uh, copper salicylate but the copper salicylate uh, is actually uh, is, uh, tend to react with the perovskite uh, to form the copper iodide. So uh, you need some uh, the uh, interface in order not to uh, form this uh, the copper iodide. So we introduced uh, uh, some uh, two-dimensional uh, structure. Okay, uh, this is five ammonium valeric acid, and then uh, the. Uh, uh, we uh, form the uh, two-dimensional structure uh, on the surface of the uh, perovskite uh, uh, using uh, post-treatment. So first, uh, uh, the, uh, we prepare the perovskite uh, using non-stoichiometric method, meaning that you slightly uh, the, uh, uh, have the excess uh, the PBI2. And then uh, after spin coating, you probably make the uh, perovskite layer and where the excess PBI2, probably excess PBI2 is uh, sitting on the surface of the uh, perovskite grain. And then uh, we uh, post treat with this uh, the 5-ABAI to form uh, the, uh, the, uh, the surface uh, two-dimensional uh, perovskite structure. Uh, the process is given here, okay? And because uh, if you, this is a very uh, good uh, the process, uh, you can control the thickness of two-dimensional layer by modifying this concentration of PBI2, okay? And then uh, we found that the hysteresis is greatly reduced uh, uh, after introduction of the two-dimensional uh, in between copper cyanide and perovskite uh, as compared to the uh, huge hysteresis uh, without uh, the two-dimensional uh, layer. And also we confirmed that the, the, uh, the presence of two-dimensional layer 
by using the XPS spectroscopy. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the, uh, for pristine uh, compound, uh, you see the uh, some, uh, uh, PB, uh, the 4F, the, uh, uh, the uh, XPS peak here. And then the two-dimensional peak is uh, slightly uh, lower, shifted to lower energy. And then uh, after uh, treatment with a two-dimensional structure, then we found that uh, the uh, PB peak is slightly uh, shifted to lower uh, the uh, energy, uh, which is uh, uh, actually indirectly uh, confirming the formation of two-dimensional layer in between uh, the copper size and the perovskite. And also, uh, this method, uh, uh, we uh, tested uh, humidity uh, stability, and then we found that the two-dimensional uh, structure shows the uh, uh, pretty much uh, the uh, tolerance uh, against uh, the humidity. And uh, the, we, uh, the, uh, for interfacial engineering, we adapted ion exchange reaction uh, here. First, we make the uh, perovskite solar cell, a perovskite layer, and then uh, uh, we uh, the post treated with uh, uh, PF6 anion to replace uh, some uh, the amount of the iodide, and then uh, we form the uh, here at the PF6. Okay, is uh, kind of the uh, thin layer uh, on top of the perovskite layer by uh, the ion exchange reaction. And then we found that the, uh, the band gap energy is uh, slightly uh, decreases uh, uh, with increasing PF6 uh, concentration. Uh, this is because the, uh, probably PF6, uh, the ion size is uh, slightly larger than uh, the uh, iodide. And then also we found that the uh, carrier lifetime increases uh, by this uh, ion exchange reaction. Interestingly, uh, the, this material, uh, the, uh, when you uh, the uh, spin coat uh, with the uh, FAPF6, okay? And then uh, uh, you can see some uh, second phase, okay? Uh, and then if you increase the concentration, the second phase, uh, the grains is, uh, is, uh, gradually increases, okay? And uh, this uh, second phase is formed on the surface of the perovskite. This is uh, called the layer by layer structure, not the surface modification, so layer by layer structure. And then we found that the, uh, this layer by layer structure uh, is uh, very good for the uh, increase in uh, open circuit voltage the, from the one volt to uh, the, uh, around the, the 1.06 volt. And then uh, the uh, uh, field factor increases but uh, decreases again uh, after uh, the, uh, the increasing the PF6 concentration because uh, uh, you can increase the thickness of the insulating layer. So pill factor will uh, uh, again uh, the, uh, will decline, uh, will be declined. And therefore the uh, optimal concentration is about uh, seven uh, milligram per milliliter. And we have the uh, uh, over the 90% efficiency. But hysteresis was also reduced uh, after this uh, two dimensional uh, the modification. And then uh, the, to explain the increase of this open circuit voltage with the PF6 uh, concentration, we uh, estimated the trap density, and trap density uh, slightly uh, decreases uh, upon uh, the PF6 concentration, increasing uh, PF6 con concentration, and which is correlated with the increase of the open circuit voltage. And also stability is uh, improved uh, uh, the, uh, as compared to the uh, non-post-treated samples. Uh, the, uh, regarding the thermal stability, thermal stability uh, is very important. We, uh, the, actually, this uh, solar cell uh, passed uh, after 85 degrees C thermal stability test. So the, uh, for the case of MAPBI3, uh, we tested uh, up to 120 degrees C. And uh, the, uh, after 10 days, actually, the, uh, this uh, perovskite is still alive meaning that uh, the perovskite material itself is uh, thermally stable. But uh, you see uh, uh, in the whole uh, device structure, uh, after uh, 85 degrees C, uh, thermal tester, the, uh, the, uh, the solar cell is died actually. But uh, this is due to, we found that this is due to the spiral uh, hole conducting material. And then uh, because the spiral has the uh, containing uh, some additive, uh, which uh, reduce further the gray strange temperature so 85 degrees is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is not a safe temperature. So uh, the, uh, probably at 
after this temperature uh, heat treatment, then uh, you lose the um, whole conductivity of this material. So, but we found that we, uh, we, uh, we actually uh, found that uh, MAPBI3 is uh, quite stable even uh, after 120 uh, degrees C. So we replaced uh, uh, this, uh, the aged uh, the spiral compound with a new uh, spiral mutate, and then uh, we found that the recovery of the, uh, the IV curve. So meaning that uh, we have to find out uh, the thermally stable whole conducting materials. And then uh, the, uh, here is uh, the universal approach toward the hysteresis free or hysteresis less uh, perovskite solar cell. So uh, the, uh, if you, uh, when you make the, uh, the uh, perovskite uh, coating solution, uh, the, if you add some uh, very small amount of the potassium <coughs> iodide in any kind of the uh, precursor coating uh, solution, then uh, uh, you uh, will have the experience about the, uh, some uh, the removal of the IV hysteresis, uh, regardless of the composition of perovskite. So potassium iodide is working very well to remove the uh, perovskite, uh, the hysteresis. And then uh, we also uh, the, uh, investigated uh, the lithium iodide, potassium iodide, uh, rubidium iodide, cesium iodide. But uh, we found that uh, only potassium iodide works very well. And the lithium iodide, for instance, uh, and uh, cesium iodide still uh, you uh, create IV hysteresis. So also we found that the uh, scan rate independent IV property uh, of the, uh, from this potassium iodide. And then uh, the uh, small amount of potassium iodide uh, in a micromole scale, uh, we did not see any change of the morphology because morphology change also can affect the IV hysteresis. If you increase the grain size, you probably reduce the IV hysteresis. So uh, to see some uh, the whether or not uh, the uh, potassium iodide effect or morphology effect, uh, so we uh, 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 investigated morphology change, but there is no uh, change of the morphology after adding some uh, small amount of potassium iodide. So uh, this IV hysteresis, removal of IV hysteresis related to potassium iodide. And then also from the, uh, the SCLC uh, measurement, uh, we found that uh, the uh, trap density is uh, uh, slightly uh, decreases, uh, which is related to uh, actually the IV hysteresis. So probably the uh, trap density or defect, uh, decrease of defect by the potassium iodide adding uh, addition uh, may be related to the uh, removal of IV hysteresis. So we uh, the calculated uh, the computationally and then uh, the among the uh, many uh, the, uh, the defect uh, structure, for instance, vacancy, interstitial antisite, Frankel defect, so we uh, <coughs> have the, some reasonable data from the Frankel defect uh, analysis. So Frankel defect mean, meaning that uh, you have the iodide here, and then the iodide is uh, moving toward the interstellar site, and then uh, you have the PB-PB diamond structure, which is uh, pretty much stable in terms of energy. And then, uh, for instance, uh, here uh, interstellar site in uh, the, uh, some, uh, the bacon site, uh, probably the A site, uh, if you add some of uh, the, uh, the, the ions, such as potassium ion, then uh, you can inhibit the uh, migration of the iodide into the interstellar site. So you can inhibit the uh, Frankel defect. Therefore, uh, you uh, could get uh, the, uh, you uh, can uh, remove the IV hysteresis. Well, uh, for instance, uh, why lithium and cesium uh, cannot remove the IV hysteresis? Because lithium is too small, cesium is too larger to accommodate in this interstellar site. So uh, by uh, using uh, a very simple cation anion radius, this uh, inter interstellar site is octahedrally uh, favored site. So potassium iodide is working well. And uh, finally, I'd like to uh, actually uh, the uh, mention about the, uh, the research direction of the perovskite solar cell. So uh, uh, in terms of the shackle quasi limit, uh, if you think about the band gap energy uh, of about 1.6 EV for a perovskite material, then uh, the uh, theoretical efficiency is about, will be about 30%, uh, which is well on the shackle quasi limit. For instance, gallium arsenide uh, the, uh, with 1.4 electron volt uh, band gap energy 
the maximum efficiency will be about the 33%. The gallium arsenide already achieved the, uh, more than 29% efficiency from single junction. So pretty much it close to the uh, shock equation <coughs> limit. The perovskite is now, uh, is the, uh, the state of a data. Uh, I take the, uh, this uh, data uh, from the 22.7% efficiency, but uh, still uh, lower than uh, the uh, SQ limit. If you break down uh, to see uh, what's going on about the current voltage and field factor, the current, uh, the perovskite, uh, here is perovskite is dark, uh, uh, the, uh, the blue color. Here is 1.6 EV. Uh, and then uh, the photocurrent density already approached uh, shock equation limit. But the open circuit voltage is slightly lower than this uh, SQ limit and the field factor. Actually, uh, for 1.6 EV field factor, theoretical value is about uh, 0 0.91, but uh, still uh, lower than the, uh, the uh, SQ uh, limit. So, the, for the case of uh, uh, the uh, for the case of gallium arsenide, already they achieve the uh, very uh, good open circuit voltage and field factor here, but uh, slightly lower the uh, short circuit photocurrent density. So, for gallium arsenide, they uh, uh, they like to, uh, so people like to uh, increase, try to increase uh, uh, the short circuit photocurrent density for gallium arsenide, which is a strategy for improving further the uh, gallium arsenide uh, uh, solar cell. But perovskite uh, is already, we have the uh, pretty much good uh, photocurrent density, but uh, slightly uh, is uh, pretty much low uh, open circuit voltage and field factor. So we have to increase the, we have to focus on increasing open circuit voltage and field factor. And then uh, the, uh, the, uh, there is some uh, relationship uh, uh, the, in order to increase the open circuit voltage and field factor, probably uh, you need some ideal diode uh, with high open circuit voltage and uh, which can uh, the produce the, some, uh, the uh, shock request uh, uh, field factor, okay? For instance, uh, the ideal factor, uh, here uh, the, uh, you have to uh, increase, the, you have to, uh, uh, if you approach the ideal uh, diode structure, then uh, you can increase the field factor, and also uh, when you increase the open circuit voltage, also you can again uh, the increase the uh, field factor. So the uh, common issue uh, to get the high open circuit voltage field factor is about the recombination issue, okay? So uh, the uh, better understanding of recombination is very important to achieve the uh, uh, shock equation limit of the perovskite solar cell. And then the intrinsic semiconductor, we have the, uh, as you know, the radiative recombination and also the non-radiative recombination called uh, SLH recombination. But uh, when you make the uh, junction, uh, such as the ETL and uh, uh, HTL, then uh, you also undergo some uh, interface and the recombination. So three are uh, very important. Uh, if you remove the interface uh, engineer uh, interface recombination and non-radiative recombination, only allow the uh, radiative recombination, probably you can get uh, the 30% uh, efficiency from the 1.6 EV uh, perovskite material. So uh, for instance, uh, here is a very uh, excellent work uh, from uh, measured from the uh, the PL, the external quantum yield. And then uh, I like to show the, for instance, uh, uh, this uh, result, uh, they uh, demonstrate that uh, if uh, only recombination, uh, uh, radiative recombination in uh, diode structure, uh, meaning that uh, uh, you don't have, you, you do not have any uh, SLH or interface recombination, then the efficiency approaches 30.5% uh, with open circuit voltage 1.33 volt. And then uh, the field factor uh, is about 0.91. The uh, photocurrent density is 25.4 milliamps per square centimeter from the 1.6 EV uh, perovskite material. You don't have to decrease, try to decrease the, uh, uh, the band gap energy to increase the, uh, the uh, short circuit photocurrent density. But uh, if you in include, once you include the SLH recombination, then the photocurrent density decreases and open circuit voltage decreased uh, about uh, uh, so 1.06 or something, 1.06 volt. So recently, uh, uh, the, uh, probably uh, uh, if you are working on the perovskite solar cell, 
So uh, uh, the high efficiency, usually high efficiency, of 20, even 20% 20 efficiency, the open circuit voltage is around 1.06 or 1.07 uh, volt, meaning that you still have the, uh, a lot of the uh, SLH recombination uh, component. And sometimes you uh, feel that you uh, found, sometimes you found that uh, open circuit voltage is even lower than 1.0 uh, volt or the 1.0 volt uh, uh, close to 1.0 volt uh, without changing, actually the, without changing the uh, short circuit photocurrent density, which uh, is indicative of the uh, interface engineering. So interface is very important. Perovskite itself, here is this one, is for instance uh, PL, uh, the external quantum yield. Uh, Perovskite itself is pretty much high, but uh, once you contact with the whole transporting layer or electron transporting layer, it gradually decreases uh, in uh, uh, the PL quantum yield. And uh, for both cases, uh, the ETL and HTL, the further you decrease the, uh, the, uh, the uh, quantum yield, and then uh, you also decrease the open circuit voltage. So because the, this, uh, our the perovskite has the uh, heterojunction structure, titanium oxide, the tin oxide, the P dot PS, whatever, and then uh, this surface is, uh, is mismatching with the uh, perovskite layer. So probably uh, the, uh, the selective contact surface is very important. Also, the, uh, the interface region, the, the perovskite, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the region uh, very uh, near to the, uh, the uh, ETL or HTL are very important. So, so if you manage well uh, the interface, between the perovskite and ETL or perovskite and HTL, so uh, you can uh, achieve the uh, higher efficiency. Uh, recently, I found that uh, the, uh, the uh, TM measurement, uh, TM actually, uh, we prepare the uh, whole device and then uh, the FIB measurement, okay? And then uh, uh, very thin uh, cross-section to measure TM. Then we found that uh, some uh, crack uh, between the spiral compound and the perovskite meaning that uh, uh, it's a poor interaction uh, between the spiral and uh, the perovskite. Also, the titanium oxide. So surface, uh, the management uh, of this, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, ETL and HTL is very important. Uh, let me uh, just introduce briefly about the, uh, the beyond the photovoltaics. Uh, recently, uh, last year, actually, we reported uh, the X-ray uh, photo detect X-ray imaging system using uh, perovskite. Uh, X-ray imaging system is very important to uh, the uh, some uh, uh, the uh, investigate some uh, disease in advance. Okay, so then uh, but uh, the in whole life uh, the uh, there is some uh, the quantity for uh, X-ray uh, dose. Okay, and uh, so if you reduce the uh, X-ray uh, the dose. Uh, the quantity of X-ray uh, the exposed to human body, uh, then uh, you can increase the times uh, of the uh, X-ray uh, the uh, measurement. So uh, there is two method. Uh, uh, indirect method is called the scintillator method. Uh, we have also a direct method. Okay, the scintillator method, for instance, the cesium iodide is very low material, and then observing X-ray uh, photons, and then uh, the uh, the emitting uh, the uh, visible light. Uh, which is detected in amorphous silicon photodiode, and then uh, some uh, uh, convert to electrical uh, the uh, the signal. A direct method is uh, you deposited uh, the uh, the photo detector such as amorphous selenium is a uh, well known material directly to the uh, TFT without uh, the back plane. So we uh, the uh, study direct method using direct method we uh, prepared a thick thick uh, the perovskite layer which is deposited directly on uh, TFT with a uh, back plane. In that case, uh, uh, we need uh, some uh, very large crystal because uh, the uh, layer thickness uh, for this uh, the photo detector is, uh, is uh, around the uh, one millimeter, okay? uh, meaning that uh, thousand micrometer. So uh, in order to uh, get a very thick layer, uh, you need uh, some uh, very large crystal. So we uh, actually, uh, succeed to making a large crystal, such as a single, the one uh, grain is about 30 micrometer. And then uh, we deposited this, uh, the, uh, uh, the multi-crystal to make thick film. 
and by uh, pressing some uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the pressing uh, treatment, and then uh, uh, this uh, film uh, looks like the single crystal behavior uh, when you measure the uh, UV visible spectrum, and then uh, we deposited uh, this uh, multi-crystalline uh, perovskite layer, uh, having the about 800 nanometer. Uh, uh, 800 uh, mi micrometer, okay, 800 micrometer, uh, and then uh, deposit on the uh, TFT back plane, and this size is uh, 10 by 10, okay, this is a 10 by 10 uh, scale uh, centimeter, and then we measure the uh, some uh, the hand image, and uh, from the time of flight measurement, uh, the mu tau value, which is very uh, important for the sensitivity, so which is about the 10 to the minus 4 centimeter square uh, per bolt. Uh, and uh, this is actually, uh, this, uh, uh, the barrier is uh, much better than, uh, higher than uh, the, uh, the three orders of magnitude higher than uh, amorphous selenium, uh, the photo detector. So this material is uh, pretty much uh, uh, the uh, promising material for X-ray imaging system. Finally, I'd like to, uh, recently uh, we uh, have studied on uh, preparing large area, the uh, coating, uh, because the, uh, for commercialization. So uh, in that case, uh, probably you could not use, you cannot use the dielectric, the spin coating, uh, the solution for spin coating uh, for large area. So we developed uh, newly uh, the, some specific uh, coating solution for large area. And uh, this is working actually, so yeah. So small amount of the coating solution is putting on this white is the uh, D bar, okay? And the back, uh, the, uh, the structure is uh, actually slow time machine. You don't, you don't need, uh, uh, you don't need buy slow time machine. Actually, this is a robot. And then uh, this is real time uh, coating. Uh, so uh, you see, uh, this is uh, pretty much uh, very good uh, film quality, and also, uh, uh, so this is, uh, I think this is a very excellent uh, technology. So my student actually developed. Uh, he spent it uh, also the uh, for one year to develop this coating solution and method, and then uh, we can get uh, uh, the efficiency actually uh, the around the seventeen percent uh, the. Uh, as average uh, the PCE. And also this uh, the method is very good for the uh, flexible uh, substrate, okay? Uh, so uh, the, even at the room temperature, uh, we do not uh, heat up this substrate. This is probably uh, just 20 by 20 uh, centimeter square. And then uh, this is a little bit, uh, it's a room temperature slightly higher. Okay, and then uh, so bar is going down. And uh, he is very clever and he is uh, yeah, hide this coating solution. Okay, very important because this is very important. <laughs> no, uh, I, I did not uh, talk to him <laughs> actually. And this is in real time because uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the scanning, uh, the time is very important. So it's very excellent, uh, the, uh, the larger coating. Okay, uh, let me finish my talk. Uh, the, I'd like to acknowledge my student, uh, and the already uh, the poor, poor student uh, got the PhD degree and then uh, uh, is uh, working as the postdoc uh, in the UCLA, uh, Professor Yang Yang, uh, EPFL, uh, and also the recently the Yabing Chi group, uh, the uh, Dr. Uh, Son uh, joined. And also, uh, I have the, uh, some uh, few uh, students, uh, the, uh, almost uh, the best course student now. Uh, we have two postdocs from uh, China, uh, the, uh, Dr. Chen and Dr. Xie. Uh, and we have also the uh, Chinese persons, uh, uh, Zhao, uh, Liu, and also here, uh, we have uh, here, yeah. Is Yong Zhang. Yong Zhang is very uh, excellent person. Uh, he is uh, um, the uh, the PhD student. Uh, he developed recently very interesting uh, many many things. He's very clever and uh, very uh, it's a lot of the idea. He has a lot of ideas. So 
if you like to, uh, if you like join uh, my uh, group, then uh, please uh, contact me. Uh, <laughs> because City University is a very excellent university. <laughs> no? so, uh, so I'd like to finish my, my talk. Thank you. Uh, now the, uh, the second is open for uh, questions. Yeah, CS. Uh, it is an uh, excellent talk, and uh, what you show us is really uh, stimulating and uh, exciting. Well, from your talk, you seem to, uh, you know, emphasize a lot on the interface and give me the impression that we already have good enough ProSky material. Is my, you know, feeling correct or? Uh, yes, I think so, yeah. Uh, already we have the uh, some the perovskite material itself is, uh, uh, is already known that uh, which is the uh, defect tolerant property and also anti bonding anti bonding structure and uh, the perovskite the recent uh, according to recent report the uh, there is phase transition of for instance MAPBI three there is phase transition uh, uh, at uh, uh, the uh, around the 60 degrees C uh, tetragonal cubic phase transition, but uh, uh, you see uh, the even after heat up uh, 100 degrees C and coming back to room temperature, the uh, the recently uh, the uh, University of Tokyo team uh, actually uh, found that there is some a mixture of tetragonal cubic structure. So furthermore, uh, they have uh, some uh, super structure the phase superstructure, which is very good for the, uh, the mm -hmm. photovoltaic property. So material itself, I think, uh, if you uh, manage it not that much carefully, so, uh, material itself has a, a very good property, defect tolerant property, but interface, interface, uh, uh, the, uh, for instance, titanium oxide, tin oxide, P dot PSS, the interface, or uh, at the interface, the perovskite structure is probably different from the bulk property. So I think the, uh, this is uh, uh, extremely uh, important. Uh, yeah. This is my opinion. Well, I got another question. Uh, in the very last part of your talk, I'm amazed that um, your student or postdoc just applied the solution at two spots, and it can spread you know, in the horizontal direction such so even. What, 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 what is it? Any magic behind that? <laughs> that is not magic, actually. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, that is not magic. Uh, well, uh, uh, you see, uh, I like to see uh, show again, and and then uh, you see this. This is uh, this is uh, the D bar. It's not simple bar. This is D bar means uh, D is uh, kind of uh, some. Uh, there is some. Uh, 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 how can I say? It's, uh, mm, the up and down, up and down. It's uh, very uh, tiny. Uh, some uh, the uh, belly. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, so, so if you uh, put uh, the uh, the uh, two spot, and then uh, the liquid, and then uh, disperse the whole layer. Okay. So then uh, the coating. So this is okay. not the magic, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much uh, for your uh, for your excellent talk. Okay, you mentioned about the stability of your Pavlovsky uh, uh, solar cell. Okay, uh, I think you have done some stability tests, and uh, your result shows the uh, uh, omitat. Okay, uh, it's the one which decomposed uh, during the process. Okay, uh, so I I like to know what's happening to the uh, uh, to the whole transporting material uh, in in your in your case. Oh yeah, actually, whole transporting material, uh, as I mentioned, that the uh, uh, especially thermal stability. So uh, I'm not talking about the uh, humidity stability, photo stability, thermal stability. So 85 degrees C, uh, uh, the we put the uh, 85 degrees C of the whole device, and then we found that uh, the uh, the uh, spiral, uh, including uh, additive. Okay, spiral compound uh, uh, the uh, looks like the uh, some uh, glassy, so uh, losing the uh, whole conductivity. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is actually uh, so, uh, so frankly speaking, uh, the 
this pile compound itself is a little bit stable at the 85 degrees C. Mm -hmm. uh, and even uh, stable uh, on top of this uh, perovskite. Mm -hmm. But uh, in whole device, using the, uh, some, uh, the uh, gold electrode, the silver electrode, mm -hmm. the, this uh, full structure, the uh, uh, spiral compound uh, is undergoes some uh, uh, glacial state. That is, uh, yeah. I, so I is, is that a chemical process or the physical process uh, to your understanding, uh, the decomposition of oh, the spiral? Oh, actually, this is a kind of the uh, chemical process, not physical okay, process. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. so the uh, spiral omitad is just not in stable enough uh, for uh, at, summer at, at stability. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not good for the uh, summer stability. So we have to uh, find out uh, uh, some uh, uh, other replacement, material. some other, uh, some better material right, in yeah, the future. Yeah, yes, okay, yeah, thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah. Yeah. How good is the how good is the stability to the UV? UV stability, I think the UV stability is okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. So, for instance, UV stability, we probably have the uh, we have the glass glass already protect. Okay, and then uh, uh, if so? the if is the uh, glass protect the UV? Yeah, perovskite uh, sol perovskite material itself is uh, pretty much stable because we have the even X-ray, even gamma ray, the perovskite is stable. So UV, uh, uh, the light, uh, on the UV light also, the uh, perovskite itself is stable. But if you use the, some, uh, uh, some, uh, the glass can trans, uh, uh, transport, uh, uh, transmit the, uh, the some uh, UV light, or the, some, uh, the uh, titanium oxide has some uh, photocatalytic effect, then probably uh, you have some uh, problem uh, in uh, the uh, UV light stability. Okay. Yep. Uh, I thank you very much for the talk. I'm very interested in the efficiency that you mentioned earlier, the maximum efficiency. So you talk about the Shoki v hole recombinations that's still the, one of the key factors limiting the existing perovskite. So how does it compare with the interface recombinations? Oh, yeah. So actually, uh, uh, so uh, the, uh, your question is... So uh, which one uh, has uh, reduced the efficiency more in existing perovskite? The, the Shoki V hall recombination? Ah, or? yeah, it's, uh, we, we cannot uh, uh, judge it right now. Uh, probably the, uh, here, I think the uh, SLHE uh, and also interface, but uh, so, so I think the interface, uh, the uh, recombination is, uh, is uh, dominant, I think, uh, as compared to SLHE. If we think about the, uh, some uh, defect tolerant property based on defect tolerant property of perovskite, then interface uh, the recombination is, uh, is uh, more critical than the uh, SLH recombination. This is my just my opinion. Yeah, I think so maybe if you look at this, right? If you have a uh, SRH, this may be uh, <coughs> this consider a shallow trap in in that. Okay, so I think so. Uh, interface uh, recombination, okay, maybe co maybe constitute much severe uh, uh, to your VOC, right? Because if you look at GSC between the SRH and the interface, the, the IV curve is uh, quite quite uh, uh, quite similar. But then your VOC is uh, one of the uh, VOC loss is one of the uh, biggest item right now. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, any other question? Yeah. Oh. Um. Uh, how about, uh, I know some people try uh, like combination of uh, cations, methyl ammonium and formamidinium. Uh, are there any beneficial effects uh, from that on stability of solar cells? If you combine MA and FA. <coughs> I do not have a right answer to your question, uh, but uh, I can uh, say we are studying now uh, uh, for single uh, MAPBI3, single component MAPBI3 is uh, very sensitive to uh, the solution condition. Okay, for for, for instance, uh, you make the, uh, the you 
you prepare the uh, fresh uh, MAPBS coating solution, and then uh, you uh, some age the for one day or yeah, some something like that, and you find some uh, difference in uh, the photovoltaic performance, meaning that uh, the uh, inside the chemicals are pretty much sensitive to uh, the time, the aging time. Uh, may, may, may you may change some uh, chemical species in the uh, coating solution. But once you have the, uh, some, uh, the mixed cation, it's uh, less sensitive to that kind of aging, yeah. So it's freshy and then the uh, aged sample seems to be uh, similar. But th this is one uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, some uh, comment. And for uh, stability, I cannot, uh, because the stability so recent, uh, according to recent report, actually uh, the 1,000 or the uh, more than uh, 1,000 times stability they reported using the mixed right, right. yeah cation. Mm -hmm. So if this is true, then uh, the uh, mixed cation uh, is uh, there is no problem. Uh, yeah, it could be better of, than pure, right? Uh, if this is true, right? Ah, yeah, I have no idea actually. The, uh, <laughs> we we cannot we cannot say. Yeah. Why, why you say if it is true? <laughs> Does it imply uh, something? Uh, <laughs> no, because I do not have uh, the uh, direct evidence. I do not Your have own data, you yeah, don't have so this, right? If I have the data, then... Uh. Yeah, I do have uh, several questions to ask you, right? Okay, so uh, uh, when you consider uh, all those uh, multi-cation, uh, multi-anion uh, system in, in there, right? You have now uh, MA, famadinium, cesium, then you have iodide, you have bromide, then you have five different <laughs> yeah. species in there. Yeah. But then when you write it, Right, you will say the 0 0.45, 0 0.16, 0 0.0 this and that, right? Okay, so I think mostly of that is based on your studying formulation, right? Because yeah. you really cannot uh, <coughs> identify what's the final product, what's the exactly composition about uh, how accurate that is, right? If you're talking about uh, your uh, each components in, in there. Hmm. So, you uh, on yeah. This? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, actually, uh, so our best efficiency is around the 20%. Yeah. So it's not the 22% efficiency. So I asked my student why uh, you cannot get uh, why uh, you cannot get the uh, the 22% efficiency. So uh, look at the carefully the uh, report and just mimicking, just mimic this uh, the recipe. So even uh, they uh, reported uh, me that uh, we could not get uh, even worse uh, than our method. So uh, it's very difficult to uh, achieve such a high efficiency. But because this, this efficiency is certi certified, we have to believe uh, anyway. But uh, recently, uh, we found that I can definitely say that uh, the 18, 90% is, uh, is uh, reproducibly. Yeah, we can get. Uh, we uh, actually, we also uh, scan uh, the composition. The composition is. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, there is no big difference uh, uh, between the uh, composition. But uh, according to people that the, uh, for instance, FA, PB, I3, uh, 85%, MA, PB, BR3, uh, 15%, this structure, uh, if you make this structure uh, quite well, then uh, the, uh, the lot of super lattice exists uh, in their pilum. Uh, so high efficiency, low hysteresis uh, contains uh, uh, kind of the uh, some uh, uh, less defect and also uh, the uh, low, very low the IP hysteresis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, uh, I cannot definitely say that which composition is very uh, good uh, for this. Uh, 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 for instance, commercialization. But we are uh, actually uh, focusing on the uh, FA PBI three uh, for commercialization. Uh, because simple component is uh, better than the uh, some uh, complicated component, mm -hmm. but still uh, uh, there is a lot of room to uh, study. Yeah. So when you just a uh, common, you are concentrate on uh, from within uh, uh, cation, right? Yeah. That's you already give out the answer to you know the talking about mesoammonium uh, from within, right? Because from within, if you have <laughs> those uh, uh, yeah. double hydrogen bonding, I think that is uh, intrinsically uh, more stable. Okay. okay. Yeah, then the uh, mesal ammonium, okay, for sub sublime, okay, at a uh, high temperature. But you know, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, recent, pr uh, please, uh, we cannot say uh, this is uh, recently we published, uh, co-worked with uh, my uh, friend, and then uh, 
the uh, inverted structure, for instance, nickel oxide and PCBM. And we deposited some uh, aluminum dubbed zinc oxide uh, uh, using ALD method. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this method, without encapsulation, we tested uh, 85 degrees C at uh, moderate uh, humidity condition. The 500 hours efficiency is not uh, degraded. Thermally stable. Thermally stable. So at 85 degrees, it is true that uh, A-side cation uh, tend to evaporate, escape from the uh, lattice. But if you protect uh, this good encapsulation, encapsulation, and then uh, if you protect some escape of this uh, uh, A-side cation, then uh, which can uh, also produce some uh, kind of the high pressure, mm -hmm. and then reorganization of the lattice, and uh, you can even uh, the increase the efficiency. So the A cation, uh, organic A cation, it plays very important role, not only the photovoltaic performance, but also the thermal stability also. So do not change the uh, inorganic cation. <laughs> this organic cation is magic, actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you spend a length talking about you know, uh, your interface engineering uh, to eliminate hysteresis, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I thought uh, in the uh, planar junction uh, device, Right, with uh, uh, proper uh, HTL and also PCBM, you already eliminate very simply. You can eliminate some of his uh, So, uh, can you comment on that? Oh yeah, that that, that is uh, because uh, the uh, uh, we uh, decreases a lot the capacitive current. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, you can yeah. have uh, either potentially dope as the interface of the PCBM. Y yes, really make a conductive. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, this yeah. is a kind of the. Uh, 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 Probably, I think this uh, is uh, not only the selective contact materials interface. Mm. The interface, the perovskite interface, uh, probably different from the titanium oxide. Mm -hmm. The perovskite contacting yeah. titanium oxide. So, yeah. Okay. So, any more questions? Yeah. Great to have a question from our students. So uh, I, I was kind of interested why do you use this Pavosky material to do X-ray <coughs> imaging? What is the reason, what's the advantage using Pavosky to do photo, photo detector, to, to, to apply in photo detection? Oh, that's a very good question. Because the uh, perovskite, uh, uh, initially perovskite film, solution uh, casted perovskite film, uh, uh, people started to understand uh, the uh, electron hole mobility and electron hole diffusion length. And then uh, at that time, it's very uh, 100 nanometer, something like that, very short. And then from the single crystal, uh, even uh, it's, uh, more than, uh, I could not remember, it's 100 micrometer, it's, uh, yeah, it's very pretty much long diffusion length. So uh, the, if we have the long diffusion length, then uh, we can apply this material to X-ray imaging system. Because uh, upon the X-ray uh, the uh, beam, and then the charge generation, and charge is collected to the uh, back plane, uh, the, uh, it, in that case, the uh, diffusion length is very important. OK, so uh, uh, if no further question, please join me to thank uh, Professor Lam Park for the wonderful talk. Thank you.